Hello! Hello and welcome to this special edition of the Blame Game. And for the second week in a row, we are in the city that's so good, they named it twice. <laughs> no, not New York. No, we're in Derry, London Derry. Not so much the Big Apple, more the wee spud. <laughs> Forget the city that never sleeps, this is the city that never works. <laughs> I'm joking! I'm joking! <clears throat> Derry is, of course, the City of Culture 2013, which is why it's a real pleasure to be here in, of course, Derry, London, Derry, legendary, the Maiden City. Some people don't know why it's called the Maiden City. It's called the Maiden City, of course, because the famous walls weren't breached uh, like a true maiden. And if you hope to see a true maiden in Derry these days... <laughs> take my advice and don't go near Shipkey Street on a Friday night. <laughs> with the show and as I say it's all about culture tonight I'm Tim McGarry and our regular panellists know as much about culture as Gregory Campbell knows about mass <laughs> but don't worry that won't stop them they are of course Colin Murphy Jake O'Kane and Neil Delamere Our special guest tonight is a superb stand-up. You've seen him on telly and Mock the Week, Celebrity Mastermind, and Michael McIntyre's Comedy Roadshow. Now, I should tell you, Derry, he's got a slightly plummy accent. <laughs> and when I say slightly plummy, I mean as in Nadine Coyle has a slightly Derry accent. <laughs> Please give a huge welcome to the hilarious Mr. Simon Evans! <laughs> That's the panel now on with the show. The audience have asked us questions and our panel provides some very unreliable answers. So Derry, what have you been asking us tonight? First question is, who do you blame for no drink being allowed in here? <laughs> the first question is, who's to blame for other places not being as cultured as Derry. <laughs> you never saw that one coming, did you, Derry? <laughs> yes, what a summer we've had in Northern Ireland. While Derry had the Maiden City Festival, the Fla and One Big Weekend, Belfast had riots and setting fire to the city centre. Yes, it pains me to say this, but it's absolutely true. It's official. Derry is better than Belfast. <laughs> It's nicer, it's friendlier, and it's more fun. And I'm honestly not just saying that because I'm in a room full of a thousand dairy people. <laughs> like I said, there were 400,000 people in the city during the FLA and only 50 arrests. Yes, even the cops were too pissed to arrest anybody. <laughs> but who can we blame for other places not being as cultural as Derry? Local politicians, it has been, and this summer has just once and for all proved that protests are like catnip for politicians in Northern Ireland. You have a march or a protest, they will pop up and they, they're, they're running about. Nigel Dodds! John <laughs> Nigel Dodds! <laughs> up in our doing, running about, trying to get his picture taken like a lunatic. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> The whole day, Nigel was doing it large. The whole time going, My people! My people are behind me! Brick! Oh. <laughs> like a pasty supper getting put in the ambulance. <laughs> Not that the Republicans are any better, Mr. Sinn Fein, Councillor. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jerry Kelly! Jerry Kelly! Invented a whole new sport. <laughs> Land cruiser surfing. <laughs> oh, perfect. Perfect 
perfect example of hubris, right? Jerry was caught up in the protest and he wanted to talk to one of the policemen in the police jeep. And Jerry, police jeep, pull over! Pull your police jeep over! <laughs> Policeman drove on. Yeah. Second police jeep, Jerry Kelly, do you know who I am? Policing board, pull your jeep over! <laughs> police jeep drove on. Third police jeep, Jerry stepped out in front of it. Pull your. <laughs> <laughs> See, the wee cop involved didn't do that deliberately. But if you have Jerry Carey still staring at you through a windscreen, you're going to put your foot down. You're going to put your foot down. <laughs> because now I get in front of myself. I've been waiting for six months to talk about this. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't, uh, you're a bit confused about well, this. It's a str it is a strange sight to see an MLA on a bonnet. <laughs> Or as Americans would say, they would say a hood. It's strange to see a hood on a bonnet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I've been away for for a while. So explain to me. This all, this all started with flags in fa and last year. This is the first time ever in the blame game we had an idea what might come up. So <laughs> this is not a flag. Right. This is a flag. <laughs> You? The people who have this flag, suddenly the people who like this flag, <laughs> took this flag down off the city hall. Nobody noticed it was there until they took it down. <laughs> <laughs> then, six weeks of mayhem, six weeks of mayhem, because the people who love this flag are going, they have taken my flag. <laughs> Taking my identity. I don't know who I am anymore. <laughs> <laughs> flags are more complicated because you may be in a part of Belfast, you'll see that flag, but we just don't go for two flags. Oh no! Not in Belfast. No, no, no. We like lots of flags. We love lots of flags. <laughs> you'll get that flag. Okay. You'll get that flag. And you'll also, on this side, you'll also get that flag. <laughs> Even though both those flags are already in that flag. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be like dumb, the lunatics with this flag. <laughs> they decided to adopt this flag. <laughs> oh, yes. Because they are brothers in the revolution. They are similar to us, only with a suntan. They are with us, we you know. So, because these ones took that flag, these ones then take that flag. <laughs> because my enemy's enemy is my friend. <laughs> Can you imagine being a tourist wandering through Belfast trying to work out what's going on? But it gets better. Then this flag gets involved. The Italian flag. Do you know why the Italian flag got involved in all this? I think you do. Tell me. Willie Fraser can't tell the difference between those two flags. <laughs> Willie Fraser. Now, God love Willie. A haircut from the 1960s and a brain from the 1690s. I love Willie. <laughs> Willie saw this flag, the Italian flag, in a primary school. And stick it for this flag. What was Willie, what was Willie doing in a primary school? I don't even want to know what Willie was doing at a primary school. Still <laughs> <laughs> going home for lunch. <laughs> so Willie said it was a proby training camp for youth, and that's the thing. Because, and because, because like Batman, like Batman and Robin, you have to have, you have Willie and Jimmy Bryson. Now, Jimmy does not call it a flag or a flag. Jimmy calls it a flag. <laughs> they have taken my flag. They have taken my flag away. Where is my flag? I thought I saw a pretty cat. Did the pretty cat take my flag? <laughs> Richard Haas has arrived. And he wants to know from the public what we could possibly do to help the situation. <laughs> no flag, no problem. <laughs> I've waited six months for that. That's been a very long time. Six months. Six months. Oh, I feel so much better now.
you know the best thing about Dean? Have you been on the uh, on their uh, the, their Facebook pages? No, but they've been on mine. Oh. <laughs> I have become slightly obsessed with their Facebook pages. Well, I know my life has gone very badly wrong when I have 215 mutual friends with Ruth Patterson. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so who can we blame for nowhere being as good as Derry? We, can't, we have to blame you, Derry. It's your fault that nowhere is as good as Derry. <laughs> So yes, over £28 million has been spent policing controversial marches in Belfast, which is ridiculous. We need every single penny of that money to pay for Straban, City of Culture. <laughs> I'm joking, Straban, I'm joking. £28 million is nowhere near enough. <laughs> and indeed, well done to the street artist in Straban who changed the piece of graffiti from join the IRA to join the library. And guess what he's been dubbed, of course? Stra Bansky. <laughs> you see, they, they stole the culture duck. The culture duck? The culture yeah, duck. Yeah, the Everglades. Yeah, uh, a four foot plastic duck. Is it that big? Yes, I think it was four foot, was a uh, culture duck was stolen from the Everglades. <laughs> First of all, what exactly is a culture duck? Does he just go. <laughs> opera. <laughs> right? <laughs> So they stole it from the Everglades Hotel, and the Everglades Hotel is on the water side, right. so we can assume it was a duck a la range. <laughs> <laughs> I took the day off after I thought of that, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> now, if you would like to ask the panel a question in the next episode of The Blame Game, just email us on blame.game at bbc.co.uk. So, what's our next question tonight? Who do you blame for culture having a bad name? Ah, yes. The big question. What is culture? Is it the ballet? Is it poetry? Is it sitting in a caravan at the top of Tudrell Avenue listening to the sash? <laughs> well, we don't know, so we're going to have to ask an Englishman. <laughs> <laughs> now I understand <laughs> exactly the nature of the setup. <laughs> so, like, who do you blame for culture? Well, I'm, can I just say before I answer that, or indeed instead of answering it, um, <laughs> I take, it, I take issue with almost everything that I've understood so far this evening. Both things. Uh, <laughs> firstly, having my accent described as plummy, and unless that is meant to imply that it suggests particularly large testicles. It's not a... <laughs> my accent, if you are struggling to place it, is in fact educated. That's the <laughs> <laughs> accent. I've used that line in Belfast, and they were fine about it. So... <laughs> first. <laughs> One of them got it, passed it round, things turned a bit ugly, but I was, uh, I was halfway home by then. Um, culture, seriously, I think, I'm, I'm with Herman Goering on this. <laughs> as with so many things, as I find, as time passes, but uh, he, he bombed Belfast. Uh, Tim assured me that would get a laugh, that one, but I, I was going to go with Coventry, but no. Um, Hermann Goering famously, Hermann Goering, if, if, for those of you whose, whose history uh, is, is, is more geographically specific, Hermann Goering <laughs> was a senior, senior Nazi, and he famously said uh, that when I hear the word culture, I reach for my gun. And I'm with him on that. Uh, <laughs> culture is, 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 like, is like art that you, nobody really wants, and so the government have to pay you to go and see it. Culture is... Culture is the, like the wrong... People don't like, really, art. People don't like art. Culture is just what people actually do. I live in Brighton & Hove on the south coast. The culture there is, is to get drink and vomit copiously. <laughs> it's a, the, Brighton & Hove is two little towns joined together. Brighton thinks that Hove is the posh end of town because in Hove women often pause to put their kebab down before squatting to urinate in the gutter <laughs> on a Friday night. And that's considered a bit lardy da in Brighton. <laughs> in Brighton, I mean, the women, they terrify... I'm a father now, I see them through a father's eyes. But this is the culture, they dress... I don't want to say they dress like prostitutes, that might sound a bit judgmental, but I will say this, seriously, if you were a prostitute working in Brighton on a Saturday night, you probably need to wear a badge or something, I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Actual prostitutes, only a <laughs> I love accents. I'm fascinated by accents. We were, we were lost earlier on. I got Simon lost and we were upstairs and we couldn't get the lift. 
because their lift wouldn't work, because I couldn't work a lift. I couldn't just wouldn't work. So there's two ladies. Irish dancing upstairs I have here. So we were sort of six year olds so, in Leotards, yeah, yeah. we really got arrested. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he started sweating first. Yeah. So was, <laughs> but I, I there was two wee women and I sort of said, sorry, the lift won't work. It's and it ignored me. Simon. I say, madam, the lift won't work. Oh, it's me, it's not me. I have to <laughs> Sorry, sir. Sorry, sorry. So she she looks like a lunatic standing there with your flags. <laughs> <laughs> I have a project. <laughs> there were one of these programmes on where um, there was a woman went to bed with an English accent and woke up with a Chinese accent. And what? This is true. And what happened? She had a minor stroke. She had this wee minor stroke. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's a, but maybe that's where they come from. Maybe, maybe a long time ago, I spoke. Hello. I say hello. Hello. Sorry, uh, hey, what about you? You're right to be OK. <laughs> Have you seen my flag? My flag's gone. What's up, my flag? Maybe underneath there is a sort of. Do you think we come pre programmed with all the possible accents then? And then if you have a stroke, it just. Yeah. You get suddenly. That mm -hmm. sounds unlikely to be like a, like a computer that has the software for loads of different printers on it. Yeah. And it's just yeah. and maybe, a question of which maybe, one you... Yeah, if you had multiple stro but if you had multiple strokes throughout the night and were walking up, you, yeah. you could be like, what about you? And then, oh, the story was the crack. And, <laughs> and I say, hello. If you just had loads of multiple strokes... I hope there is a similar story in China of somebody who wakes up with an English accent. <laughs> <laughs> it a little bit, yeah. That somebody was doing something. Hey, what, what's, what's, what's going on here, then? <laughs> <laughs> Fancy pig's foot for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Little worm what action, of accents passing what action through would you like then? Belfast is harsh. Belfast. You can't be romantic with a Belfast accent. Oh. <laughs> no, you can't. See you. See you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a threat. It's not the best for the best. No, it's, it's sort of. See you and me. <laughs> <laughs> And again, it's just, it's, uh, you couldn't There's have... an old saying, isn't there? It's accents for, these are horses for courses. There's, yeah. there's, there's, uh, I can't remember, is this where you say, uh, I speak uh, English to my butler and uh, French to my mistress and German to my dog. I think those, those, <laughs> that, that was a traditional sort of uh, upper-class approach to accents. It, you know, it depends who you're addressing. <laughs> But you see, the thing is, we believed Simon entirely yeah. because... Yeah. No, Simon, you just said that, I speak, I speak German, you're dog. Like, you're going, that, talking shit. It's like, you cannot... Oh, I had, I had a horrible, horrible experience. <laughs> horrible experience. My, my long time ago, my, uh, told me that I don't do pornography. Not that I don't actually. You don't do it. For no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't do it. No, 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 I know I don't watch it. I'm not into it. You know what I mean? I'm not going to pay good money to watch somebody else enjoy themselves. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> play guys I play cards with, and they were they put on this thing in the corner to get me because I'm very good at cards. And it was two. It was a young couple, and they were battering away. They were battering away. <laughs> battering. It was hard. You were concentrating. And, and was you it hard? Up, was it hard? <laughs> <laughs> what saved me was somebody turned the volume up. It was a locally made porno film. <laughs> And I just broke it when your woman went, Come on, yeah, boy! Come on! <laughs> <laughs> well, that's maybe, that's, maybe that's what it's like for, the, you know, that thing about the Swedes and their, their sort of... There used to be the pornographic industry was always the Swedish films. Oh, yes, and you meet Swedish people. Oh, yo, watch your films. You know, and, but it's, it's probably like that for Swedish people. That's probably what they're saying. And it sounds all right to us going, Urshtu, Urshtu, Urshtu. And, um, <laughs> but the Swedes are going, Ah! Oh. <laughs> no, it's funny, come on down, lash it in the bay. You know, or whatever. I don't like it because of the overemphasis on. No <laughs> <laughs> one else? No? <laughs> I'm your father, just... he's your mother. Come here! <laughs> That's one I've never understood. Who's your daddy? Yeah. In a Belfast accent again, not Who's your daddy? <laughs> Who's your daddy? <laughs> if you want to. If you want to get the foot of the car. You know, if you want to clear. <laughs> If you want to clear a pub in North Belfast, just shout that out. Who's your daddy? I'm not your dad. <laughs> but see, I, I don't like it because of the overemphasis on the whole uh, excessive fellatio. What are you talking about <laughs> now? <laughs> Pornography. The full on. That's what I want during sex. I want to look down there and imagine you like a pelican with a mackerel. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that, Gary, because you won't be seeing it on TV. <laughs> 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 they go further, so. No, no. 
So what's our next question tonight? Our next question is, who do you blame for our divisive sports culture? Yes, Derryman, well, County Derryman, Martin O'Neill, is in line to manage the Republic of Ireland football team. O'Neill is in the top ten Northern Ireland footballers ever, which makes him ideal for the Republic job, as he's already used to losing most international matches. <laughs> <laughs> Martin is the sixth of nine children. Well, at least we know what foot he plays with. <laughs> but... <laughs> Who can we blame for our divisive sports culture? It, it is pretty... Bad. I'm not a sports fan at all, uh, the, uh, uh, which I'm happy about, because if, you know, if you've supported football here, you'd have to support either Northern Ireland or Republic of Ireland, and I believe neither did particularly well recently. It's a very divisive thing. If you say you support Northern Ireland, people assume you, you're... And if you say you support the Republic of Ireland, people assume you're... And uh, there's nothing wrong with being gay. <laughs> but uh, it's... <laughs> I, 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 the people did, because this whole thing started, and then uh, when the Republic lost and uh, Northern Ireland lost, then there was the whole debate starts up again, uh, usually probably from the middle class people who are running around who are into football, and uh, who turned around and said, well, why can't we just have a, an all-Ireland team? It works for the rugby. <laughs> and you're thinking, really? Really? I know bugger all about sport, but I know that is not going to work. If you have fans who can't even agree on a chant that doesn't annoy some of their own fans, <laughs> then that's not a team to join up with another team who they all completely hate. This is because that was the whole thing of Jimmy Bryson, the, the, the diplomat, uh, was, in, uh, was in Luxembourg on an Aer Lingus flight to go to the match, and then after the match, apparently there was a bit of controversy because there were rumours that they'd sang, uh, what was it, the song, uh, the, Billy the Billy Boys, Boys yeah. and that we are the Billy Boys, if you're not familiar with this particular ditty. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, it contains the lines, we are, we are, we are the Billy Boys, we're up to our necks in Fenian blood, surrender or you'll die, we are the Billy Billy Boys. <laughs> and... Uh, this song allegedly was sung. You're not supposed to sing this song. And then Jamie said uh, it, they didn't sing this song. Uh, and uh, if they did, which they didn't, apparently, they sang it outside the stadium, which they didn't. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and anyway, it's not an offensive song at all. And uh, he checked in a hotel that was in a red light district. And he checked out because he didn't think it was appropriate. And I thought he was absolutely right because the red light district has enough dicks. <laughs> and uh, he, he moved somewhere else. Um, it is a very odd thing. If there was an All-Ireland football team, then Coulter would be writing another song. This is the problem, right? <laughs> and uh, if you watch the rugby, like the, that song, and then the other song, and everybody hates the other song. Oh, that's horrible. Everybody hates it. You can just see them going, Ireland, Ireland. That's the problem as well. Northern Ireland doesn't have a great chant either. You know when you're chanting for the team? You know, England, is it? England! You know, it's exciting. It's England! You know when things are going well? England! And Northern Ireland, Northern Ireland. <laughs> You can't do it. No, no, you can't do it. You can't do it. And I, you know, it's just you, it's, people always. Uh, you're right, though. Uh, when Northern Ireland and uh, Re Republic of Ireland were doing badly, a friend of mine, he's from London, said to me, "Why can't yeah. you just have one team that Northerners play for and Southerners play for?" And I went, "We do. It's called the Republic of Ireland." <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second here. Just one wee bit for Belfast. They're playing this. Sam Barry, hey. We're bringing down all the peace walls. We're taking down all the peace walls in Derry. I know there's a big wall all around this city. <laughs> <laughs> there's a big wall not getting broken down. Anyway, in Derry you don't need peace walls. No. Because they've got a river. <laughs> if you want to have a rat in Derry, you have to learn to swim. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't swim because there's a big monster in the river. <laughs> it was, I saw him recently. What did that to do? What did that to do with Colm Kill? Colm Ki Kill. You're good at this. You're good at this. Essentially, you know a dairy this. man saved all of Western civilization. <laughs> Basically, when the, bar when the barbarian hordes were destroying all of Europe, mainly Germanic tribes and the fall of the Roman Empire, the only people who kept learning alive were liter literate people who were generally monks, and they were came from England. Now, they'd usually, that, had, uh, that uh, Christianity and literacy spread together into England, uh, actually up into uh, Iona and the north of uh, Britain first, and then it went all the way down uh, through uh, Columbus and Columbanus and all the rest. And, but the original one was Colum Kill, who was Columba, who was from here. So he's a guy who essentially saved all the West and civilization.
Thank you, thank you very much for that. There's just time now for our quick fire round. I will read you various newspaper headlines and I want you to be quicker than a man who's made dairy jokes all night getting out of the Millennium Forum. <laughs> or quicker than Richard Haas booking a flight home. Man sold newborn grandson on Facebook. After someone poked his daughter. to scrutinise prostitution laws. He's looking for a loophole. <laughs> Gailed off to be the first Irish man in space. Make gravity history. <laughs> the men who have decided to live longer without sex are called husbands. My wife is going to kill me for that one. I'm dead, dead. Don't use that one. A woman's womb is not her own. As she fails to make final repayment. <laughs> Fiddler on the roof. Get six months from Judge Barney McElhoom. <laughs> Inflation down. Says Leek. George Best Football Academy opens. A bottle to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> Minister orders spot checks of new schools. In acne clampdown. <laughs> Why shouldn't I breastfeed in a public pool? If you're old enough to ask that question, you're probably old enough to eat solids. <laughs> 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 and finally, BBC is dumbing down science, says Professor Cox and Johnny Balls. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's it, that's the end of the show. Please show your appreciation to our panel Colin Murphy, Simon Evans, Jake O'Kane, and Neil Delamere. Tim McGarry. Until next week, don't blame yourselves, blame each other. Goodbye. And just in case you missed last week's episode, you can always watch it on the BBC iPlayer right now and well worth the watch. Don't forget there's more Blame Game over on BBC Radio Ulster tomorrow afternoon from 5 past 12, 92 to 95 FM, 1341 medium wave.